Hi, my name is Daniel Meade Cunningham for Art Collector, zooming Elvis Richardson from Gadigal Land in Sydney, currently actually at the Clothing Store Artist Studios at Carriageworks in Redfern. Elvis, where are you today? I'm on Murundjeri Land in Brunswick in Melbourne. Hi, Daniel. Hi, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> is that your studio? Uh, yeah, it is. I work at home predominantly in this large room here, like, yeah. Amazing. And today we're going to be talking about that pink sculpture in the background that says the word settlement. Yeah. So when I was asked by Art Collector to do this, I immediately thought of your settlement series. I've been following that um, series in, in its many forms, particularly um, its Instagram iteration, which we'll look at in a, in a moment. But I'm particularly drawn to the way you've also created these sculptural forms for that body of work. Um, this recurring motif of the gate. I feel like at this time um, that we're all experiencing, the, this time of great uncertainty and this great unsettling time, your work really spoke to something um, which I, I don't know, it felt very pertinent. Um, is, that, mm. is that something you, that has struck you now that, now that we're in this time? Because I know you've been working on this settlement series for a while, Elvis. Yeah, I guess like there was always like an anxiety and a precarity in the images that I was collecting, um, which started through my own housing search and um, and led me to discover these um, this incredible you know plethora of images that I just take screenshots of on, on my mm. iPad and that's how I collect them. Um, so yeah, I was looking for properties um, in a price bracket that um i was able to afford mm. and found that was what my criteria so i was really looking at this kind of um a lot of regional properties a lot of properties that were you know in disrepair and different places like that but you know it just showed a different kind of value system mm. like in terms of how that you know was represented across australia because on the app you could go anywhere in australia and zoom into a town and look at all the i mean everyone's used the domain app mm. right um what i might do is share my screen um so that we can look at your instagram feed as a way of just setting the scene for um for yeah, this thanks. particular body of work we're on your um elvis.richardson <laughs> instagram yeah. and i've been i'm really enjoying this you've been doing this for a while haven't you posting these images yeah, it's funny. The first time I posted an image was actually by accident. Mm. And the funny thing was that I had a, a few people commented on it and it was a bedroom scene and, and uh, people thought it was my bedroom. And I was like mm. a little kind of like embarrassed because, you know, it wasn't to my taste and, um, or not embarrassed, but it was kind of interesting. So yeah, then I just continued to post them up without comment and just, you know, um, through creating patterns, I suppose, that's the fun thing about Instagram. Um, you know, I was able to, you know, build up a language with it. And mm. it's, yeah, I think, I mean, like I'm attracted to images for their composition and as well as, you know, what's in the picture. Um, mm. I hate the Instagram square because obviously it's cropping out some mm. really, you know, I've had to kind of edit them in that sense. But, um, it's yeah, kind of, like moments like yeah, this, yeah. like I can imagine, you know, someone sitting in that chair and there's a family photo <laughs> and you can see the air blowing the... I mean, they're just amazing images that document like lifestyle and people's lives. Mm. And they're not staged in the way that we're used to seeing um, real estate imagery mm. and the way that that represents in a way how people live, but it, people don't live like that um, yeah you know this is more indicative of you know how people live in a way and um yeah of course there's just eccentricities and um you know oddities and things you know on occasion i you know i had been looking at them with my son when he was much younger and we'd kind of guess at the identities of the people who lived in the house mm -hmm. like oh they're in they're a single old man or that's like a young share house or that's a family. Um, I Ooh, mean, and, yeah, <laughs> I mean, this one, what, you know, I would be attracted to just for the color and the mood and yeah, 
the composition. I mean, they're I feel like they're all just well. like soaked in mm. kind of pathos and narrative. And um, they also feel like they of, could be crime scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah they have a as, um, true crime. It has often come through in a lot of your work in the past. Yeah, I think it's fascinating in this respect in terms of the intention of the photographer mm. um, and then the kind of reception of its context and how that kind of like informs its meaning and then how someone might be looking at it. Like when we look at interiors of other people's houses and whether we're a potential house buyer or, or whatever, or we're just looking at them like myself for enjoyment, mm. um, you know, we're kind of projecting something onto them. Like we're projecting like us in that space. If I lived that life, if that's what I'm thinking, I'm imagining other people are thinking that too. Yeah. Yeah. And they definitely have a sense of, um, a class inscribed into them because because there are these vernacular images but like you said they're not kind of um, stylized or, or done up in the kind of very typical way that you, you kind of um because they're at the bottom yeah. of the market and yeah they're not about profit they're mm. kind of you know they're kind of a thing that they're about home and that's mm. not what housing's about anymore and it's about how you build your wealth and you know um and i'm just kind of questioning that value system how do you see the idea of home in your work? Um, it probably is a place of anxiety mm. for me because of my own personal history, like being an adopted person, for example. Um, you know, having, a, you know, my own personal stories that, yeah, I guess mm. um, have, you know, mean home has been an unsettling place for me. But, um, you know, going forward and as an artist, it's also been a struggle. Um, you know, because in Australia, you know, just the focus on home ownership and this kind of great divide between, you know, ownership and renting and, you know, the kind of way it makes you feel like a second class citizen mm. to um, not have the pleasure of, um, you know, whatever one perceives having one owns home. Like, you know, if I have to ask permission to put like a hang a picture on my hallway wall. Mm. etc that i mean i guess i'm trying to evoke things like that i can't remember your question now sorry <laughs> well i guess just this idea of home and how it kind of manifests in your practice um it's interesting that your studio is at home so you yeah. um you have been working at home obviously you know all along yeah. whereas yeah, a lot of us yeah. are now adapting to the idea of working at home yeah yeah that no, kind of kind of like that's... bleeding that happens between home and work uh, yeah between, I guess, domestic life and labour. Um, yeah. You know, how we demarcate the distinction between work and life, you know, our personal lives and our professional lives. Absolutely. Is that something that interests you? In, and do you think... Yeah, no, definitely, you? because I think as an artist, those things get melded. Mm. I mean, it's like, um, yeah, I'm very aware of that and how that's perceived and you know my other projects like countess and stuff you know unpack some of those ideas i think yeah. um you know around identity and yeah public and private and um I, i'm feeling differently about it at different stages in my life about home um mm. and that's interesting too when did um, you start working on the series of works around settlement elvis uh would have been about 12 years ago okay yeah. and so it's um you're currently working on a show that's going to be at hugo michelle gallery um yeah when, when will that open that's going to be november the 9th it's okay. going to open yeah, yeah. Great. and so the work behind you the settlement um gate it's a gate yes yeah yeah so yeah, I really love metal and I guess like this idea of gate and, and like manipulating them in some way. Mm. Um, I, so I look at eBay a lot and Gumtree and kind of looking for things I can adapt um, in, you know, however I want to. But yeah, I mean like rod iron gates have become a bit of an obsession and other kind of metal things that, you know, I use for doors like this screen I've got behind me. and. Mm. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of collecting those together because I guess, you know, they can talk about boundaries and entrances and exits and 
you know, the idea of settlement, um, you know, referencing, you know, the property exchange, the moment of property exchange and ownership and um, as well as a kind of settlement in terms of, you know, how things sit on the earth and, mm. um, and settle and settlement in terms of like what you might settle for and, um, and whether that be a personal thing or the systems that we live mm. in. And I, when I saw this skate and this idea of bending it and it slumping down the wall, um, and I love using text and, um, and using words that kind of have these multiple meanings that, you know, if I can use them in a couple of different situations, you know, that kind of interests me and it, that's what I love thinking about and problem solving in the studio. Mm. The gate's um, such a liminal space too because it, it kind of, it's an entrance. You can kind of, um, it's a threshold yeah. you enter, but it also keeps someone out. Yeah. So it's a security device. Um, you know, we think of gated communities. Yeah. They're so, it's so loaded in so many ways. And when it's attributed it. to the idea of home, it's, it's, yeah. like, it's about our own home security and our own sense of security. But yeah, it's, yeah. But it also can be a lot darker than that as well. Yeah, I agree. What What do you, yeah. uh, is the pink, is that kind of a bit of a joke on old fashioned gender colour coding or? Yeah, I guess mm. it is. And like, I thought, well, if I'm going to go colour, why not just kind of like do something a bit mm. branded like that? I yeah. mean, pink, you just cannot get away with it. And the curls, I guess, add to that as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought I'd try it and I'm happy with the results. Yeah. Yeah.